Hey guys, Danny Johnson here, and today I want to show you all the vacuum lines on the 0304 Cobra, where they go, where they plug in, and so we'll just do these one by one. Okay, so the first one we'll talk about is this one that's in the back of the supercharger. So you can see that there's three red hard lines, and so if you follow one of them, they're going to go into this loom, and where they come out is on this little Y fitting. So here it's coming from there. And then one of these lines will go into the actual car. It's that black line there. And that's gonna operate your air conditioning when you switch it from floor to vent and all that. That's done off of vacuum. Okay, so listen as you turn these. You hear that? That's all vacuum, so that's why you can hear that. Then the other line is going to come into here into the evaporative system. So it's under the fender right about here. Uh, you can get to it going through the fender well. Um, but um, <clears throat> basically that one also will go different places back to the fuel tank and everything that's for the evap system. Okay, so the other two lines that are coming off of that top one will come through this big harness and eventually they're gonna go, the bottom line goes into this EGR canister one, the bottom of the EGR, and then uh, the other one's gonna go into the check valve here. So you can see it kind of coming, making a little U shape here and going into the check valve. Okay, so similar to this top one, there's a bottom one there. And so on the Whipple, it goes onto Whipple's lower um, plate there. Otherwise, it goes into the back of the supercharger on the Eaton. And so one of those lines will come over here to the fuel rail pressure sensor. So that's one of those red lines. There's two red lines on this one. And so the second line will come through this loom, and it's going to go to the yellow line that's going through here, if you can see that one. And so the yellow line is for the boost gauge that the car comes with. So here's the red hard line and it's going to the yellow one. So if you follow that yellow line, it disappears into the firewall and then inside the car, behind the glove box, you see that yellow line coming back through here for the boost gauge on the dash. Okay, now this one I have a T in it because I also have it working for my uh, AEM fail safe. It has a boost gauge option. But anyway, that uh, line makes its way through here and then you have it on the factory uh, boost gauge there. Okay, so the next one, this is called a boost reservoir. So I've pulled this out so you can see it. It just has a little cap on it and it's just a little canister. And so this one just sits down in here. It's usually taped to another line. So this line just disappears right into our loom and it's gonna come out all the way over on the check valve which is here, and then it's gonna go into the bottom of the boost dump solenoid. Okay, so while we're talking about the boost dump solenoid here, we'll just review all three of them. So the top one is just going straight to the check valve. The bottom one is also going to the check valve on the other side. And then the middle one, is gonna to go to the boost bypass valve, which on the Eaton cars, it's right here. So Whipple puts it kind of behind the blower. It's a little harder to see. I'll show you that one uh, soon, but that's gonna to go to the top of the boost bypass valve. And the bottom of the boost bypass valve is gonna come over here and it's going to end up right here where it goes into the air intake. So this is the one that has the cap on one side. So this is the other end that's going uh, to the boost bypass valve on the bottom. Uh, so here's a better look at the bypass valve. The top one here is what's coming from that boost dump solenoid. This is uh, coming from our uh, supercharger install video. If you want to see it, I'll put the link in the description. And there's the bottom line that's going to the intake. So that bottom line goes over to the air intake. 
Okay, and to finish up the EGR solenoid as well, so remember we have the bottom one is the red line, and that's coming from one of these three, from that top one. And then the other green one that's on here is going straight up on top of the EGR here. Okay, now on the back of the blower as well, there's one big vacuum line here. That uh, black one right there with the hose clamp on it. Okay, and so that one actually tees off. It will go underneath the lower intake manifold and there's a plug in the bottom. Okay, so here's what it looks like on the lower intake manifold. You'll see there's a plug in the bottom and so it attaches to that plug and then it just comes up and goes into the T there. And then the other side is gonna be coming from back here on the cam cover. There's uh, this piece here. Sometimes you'll route it so you'll have a catch can here like I do, but basically from here, it's going into this hard line and uh, it tees into the back. So that's where you have both of those from the lower intake manifold and then this one are both coming from the back of the blower. So that's helping with uh, any oil and moisture and everything that's going down into the lower intake manifold. It's supposed to be bringing it back out and also helping with the pressure that's inside the cam cover. As you know, you have to have that vented. So on this side, uh, this hose just goes into the intake. We've added a pre-filter to catch some oil there. And uh, that just helps from oil getting trapped basically in the intercooler. Okay, so most of these are in the same place on all the superchargers, but here it is on the Eaton just as well, so you can kind of see it. Here's our one with the two hard lines here, the top one that had the three hard lines. And uh, I'll put the video uh, link to this one that shows how to install and remove all of this. Um, but uh, there's that uh, bigger line back in there. Here's our smaller one, but this is just what it looks like on the Eaton supercharger. So anyway, that's just kind of a quick rundown of all the vacuum hoses, where they're going, where they're plugged in. And um, of course, there's a few more here with the EGR system. You have other lines that are going down. And so, um, but these are the, the main ones for the engine that you'll be dealing with. The EGR itself, you have the EGR pipe that comes into it and that's going down to the exhaust manifold. And so it's allowing those gases to come back up and be reburned. Uh, that's all another topic for another day. But anyway, that's a quick rundown on the vacuum line system. Let me know if you have any questions. And as always, thanks for watching. Please make sure you subscribe if you're new to the channel. I have a lot of videos like this. And uh, we're happy to have you. Thanks, guys.